This is uh, Morten from Inkish. Um, I'm actually very pleased today because I am talking to a guy. His name is Eddie Hagen. He's from Antwerp in Belgium. And I was supposed to meet him yesterday, but uh, I was afraid that I had COVID, which I uh, fortunately didn't have. So uh, instead of meeting Eddie in person, we are now here on uh, online. Uh, but that will uh, not keep us away from talking about a, a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, namely the lander machine that uh, that uh, Eddie has been looking quite a lot into. But before we get into this, uh, Eddie, uh, welcome to Inkish. It's a great honor to have you here on, on my channel. Thank you for inviting me. Always. Um, before we talk about all the articles you have written and all the research you have done, let's talk a little bit about your, your history, because uh, who is Eddie Hagen? Yes, good question. I get that sometimes. I hope you know what you said, um, right? <laughs> yes, my, most of the time I do. Um, I live in Belgium. Um, um, I already have grey hair, um, so I'm not that young anymore. Um, I started in the printing industry in 1988 at the uh, Federation of the Printing Industry in uh, Flanders, in Belgium. Sorry, I should say. Um, I was there for eight years. Um, then was uh, at a small pre-press... Uh, publishing house uh, for a year, then one year outside of the uh, printing industry. And then um, I joined uh, the uh, Innovation Center for the Printing Industry when it started in 1998 until uh, 2015. Um, then I had a little bit of a medical uh, um, uh, issue, uh, a serious fatigue issue, uh, which eventually turned out to be linked to my, uh, uh, to my breathing. Um, oh, so sorry to bad breathing prevented, yeah, bad breathing, uh, breathing issue uh, prevented um, uh, my muscles uh, from regenerating. Oh. So uh, the solution was, by the way, uh, quite simple. I got the surgery. My nose uh, uh, is a little bit uh, larger now. The uh, nasal cavities, uh, or how do you call that? Uh, so it's fixed. Um, um, so I was there a uh, long time, very long time, and. Um, at the time, I visited uh, lots of uh, printers, uh, vendors, uh, conferences, uh, also did a lot of research. Uh, you can still find a lot of uh, that online, uh, also with uh, all kinds of tools that we, uh, uh, that we uh, made and launched. Uh, and also some, um, and this, this is also important to know, um, my background has always been helping printing companies uh, because they're in a sometimes a very difficult spot. Um, so that has always been my uh, my primary objective. And for instance, when uh, Penton launched uh, their new uh, at that time new uh, Penton Go Guide, which had a fundamental issue, it specified RGB numbers, but it, it didn't say specify which RGB numbers, Adobe RGB or sRGB. Um, so I wrote an open letter to uh, to Penton to uh, to uh, uh, talk about that. Uh, they started immediately adjusting the. Uh, um, the information, the manuals, uh, but it did make a lot of other mistakes uh, the years on. Uh, mm -hmm. So that has always been my uh, my background. Um, so, so, so you can say that the so, sorry to interrupt. So you can say that the passion of of being accurate and the passion for helping uh, uh, how printers can make things right is uh, is a uh, is deep in your DNA, basically, right? Yes, yes, very deep. So it's not only complaining about stuff that doesn't work, but it's also promoting stuff that does work. Uh, so for instance, um, these days, the um, uh, color conversions with uh, low total area coverage is popular. But already in 2011, I challenged my colleagues then to uh, make ICC profiles that uh, went as low as possible. And we uh, made a profile uh, with, with a total area coverage of 220%. That was almost indistinguishable from one with uh, with uh, 340 or uh, 320%. Uh, and this quite was a due lot of to uh, savings to it, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it was uh, due to a, a a food packaging printer that was complaining to me um, because at that time the, um, the difficulties with the uh, drying of the ink and uh, UV curing ink was not allowed anymore for food packaging uh, due to the uh, photo initiators. And he asked me, do you know any ink that is uh, that is really fast drying because now with regular ink I have to wait we I have to wait a week before it's oh. completely dry. 
Yeah. Uh, so that is something that is more. important, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I started asking questions, and then it seemed that um, all the artwork he got was with a very high ink coverage. Um, so uh, that's why I challenged my colleagues. Um, I did the uh, the evaluation of the profiles. We printed some test samples, and even seasoned printers couldn't see the difference. 180 percent, they could see it, but. Certainly 260%, it was indistinguishable from uh, the other, with the higher ones. So that food packaging printer, he started using that and all his problems were solved. Mm. It's uh, funny that you mentioned this because uh, I think that the first time I heard about you, and I apologize that I haven't, uh, I've known about you for all my life, but that is my ignorance, so that's nothing to do with you. Uh, that was, no uh, I think you showed uh, in a post on LinkedIn, I think you showed uh, some really funny, um, examples of how big difference you can see in in even like brands like coca-cola and i think even starbucks and some of the uh, the bigger world recognized yeah. brands that it was like totally uh, different from from can to can right yeah indeed and that's what uh that's one of the uh, um the things i'm fighting for a little bit is that we should get realistic about uh tolerances that consumers will accept and there is this uh, uh, print echo chamber that says, so oh, two delta E is the maximum that we, we should allow. I'm sorry, most consumers don't even notice that. And I had a very embarrassing uh, experience only a few months ago. Um, I buy a s certain cereal brand and it was tasting different. And I couldn't get my head on it what it was. And I thought it was maybe it was a bad package or something like that. Uh, and after more than a week, I noticed that it didn't have any peanuts in it. So I had bought a, uh, the wrong variety. They both, they both have um, some kind of orange as an accent color, uh, but those two colors are 10 Delta E uh, apart. And I picked the wrong one. So me, the guy who is uh, involved with color a lot. So. And the funny thing when you mentioned this, I can't help think about because if you look at uh, in a market right now where there are so many retailers doing uh, private labels uh, and, and uh, basically they often tend to make their products similar to the brands we know. So it makes it even more confusing, right? Because if we have something that looks yes. almost like Coca-Cola, but it isn't Coca-Cola or yeah. a cereal that does not look like, but it mm. have the similarities, it is actually a little bit yeah. uh, misleading to the consumers, right? Yes, happened to me also. <laughs> So, uh, so what has the feedback from the market? Because I mean, uh, when I started following you, it seems that uh, quite a few people in the industry find your findings quite interesting, right? Um, interesting or annoying? Um, yeah, yeah, but same, depends. same, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the but the first articles I published on the uh, uh, on the fact that that even the biggest brands. If you look at them in practice, they have much higher tolerances than uh, than two delta E. Everybody was no, oh, no, you can't do that. Uh, it has to be two delta E. And and you also get all kinds of uh, studies that they refer to. Uh, at the moment, when I had a lot of time, I digged in a little bit deeper, or it was it was a week's work, I think, um, to find those uh, uh, those studies that were referenced. And they are not about small uh, tolerances in printing, about um, uh, the, 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 the difference between print and black and white. So that famous quote, uh, uh, color will uh, enhance brand recognition by 80%. It's from the paper uh, newspaper industry on the effect of color ads versus black and white ads. It's not on Pantone uh, number A and number B, which, are, which is less than two delta E apart. So it's, uh, there are lots of strange things uh, from that point of view. Um, um, so, but I have the impression that more and more people uh, begin to accept the fact that at two delta E, that it is, it's, it's, it's silly, and yeah. it one, it doesn't make any difference, and two, it's making the life of printers very miserable. Um, mm. A few few days ago, I uh, posted uh, a video online. Uh, this is a guest lecture I did for RIT, and there is a really nice example from uh, a, a food packaging. Um, Daily Shock, which, which is biscuits with a little bit of chocolate on it. Um, they have it in two varieties, the one with uh, milk chocolate, the one with uh, 
uh, dark chocolate and actually one time in the supermarket I found two packages uh, or I found packages um, where the uh, dark one was lighter than the milk one. So at, I bought them both. Normally I only so eat a uh, dark one. Um, and I've, showed it, I've shown this uh, many times in, uh, uh, during presentations and, and, and seminars I gave. And at one time, uh, somebody said, said to you were in the lunch, do you want to know the story about those packages? Those were printed at our print office, at our print oh. shop. I said, okay, yes, I do want to know. Well, it seemed that the, um, uh, the dark chocolate was printed first and um, then uh, the, um, the uh, project product manager from Daily Shock, she came in, a lady who prefers um, uh, light chocolate, uh, milk chocolate. So for her, an appealing color was a light brown. So they were um, actually forced to, uh, to adjust the colors? Yep, 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 indeed. The week after? Uh, they printed the uh, dark chocolate. No, sorry, the the, the uh, not the dark chocolate, the milk chocolate. The light cho uh, milk chocolate. But she yeah. couldn't come. But she couldn't come. So it was the uh, uh, the press operator who decided uh, what the color of that uh, chocolate was, and he preferred dark chocolate. So that's why, uh, on the one end, the dark chocolate became lighter, and the uh, milk chocolate became darker. Mm. So this has and nothing uh... to do with like, mm -hmm. color production. Mm. And it's funny you mentioned this because I I also uh, read an article, uh, or actually I, I got interested because you responded to an older article you wrote about a quote about how color sells more than uh, how it works, and it basically you you traced back the source of the of the of the of the phrase. So I mean. Um, I mean, I, the reason I'm asking you these questions is because, uh, as mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, the lander machines in a moment. But I think it's important to understand that that when we talk about colors, it's not because colors are not important. It's important to the brands. It's important to our understanding of values to what we buy and consume. And therefore, of course, very important when it comes to the machines that reproduces the, the colors for packaging and for branding as we speak about. So let's move directly into uh, a question I have uh, been dying to ask you for a long time. Because when you started uh, looking into the Lander, um, and I remember, I think you compared it to, was it a uh, Canon i300 or no, that was to, a, was it to an Indigo print, you, the first one that you measured against? Yeah, the first one was uh, both the uh, Xerox Irides and the oh, yeah. HP, but I forgot the number. HP Indigo, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of them. Mm. The reason I'm asking is because uh, why why did you get interested in checking the prints? I mean, because if you look at the print coming out of a lander machine, just the ones I have seen, they just look stunning. Uh, they have uh, vibrant colors and it looks nice from a, at least from a layman's perspective. Is that not what you experienced or did you have some some speculations or something that you wanted to to check out in that process no it, it was uh it was all a little bit of a coincidence uh, now i have been critical about lambda machines since the start um so for instance uh, i noticed uh Drupal 2012 that uh, uh demos on some of the machines i watched them several times and the touch screens were not responding the same way so sometimes there was a little bit of lag, sometimes it was accurate, and one time it responded before it was touched. So these were not touch screens, those were uh, monitors uh, showing a movie. So, so, when, when, when so, I basically, to... so basically your, your, your curiosity to look into Lambda was, uh, was uh, based on that that uh, the show that Lambda has always been very good at, at the Drupal shows, is basically that that caused you a few considerations uh, what you saw whether it was true or not true yeah yeah and and and, and specifically because so many people uh, were were amazed by the show they signed letter of intent for buying machines uh, but in 2012 it was just a show it, they, they didn't show anything there were a few print samples uh, behind glass um, they were not looking that well so it was just selling promises, uh, but for all of people, at least, uh, signed a letter of intent. And the, um, the team of that Drupa should have been um, either uh, Flexo goes uh, offset quality or the super fast job changes on offset presses. 
That's a time when uh, offset presses, you had almost instant job changes, uh, but it was the Lambda Drupa. Um, mm. And I guess some of the 400 companies that signed a letter of intent would have been better off with a new offset press, with a fully automated uh, offset press. Uh, they could have had that a few months later already, but well, now they're probably still waiting. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking this is also because, I mean, if um, uh, I sent you some videos that I found uh, on uh, on some mm -hmm. of the quotes from uh, Benny Landa himself. And um, yeah. I mean, one of the things is that you, you're probably right if you knew that you had to wait 10 years for you would probably have made other decisions. But at the time, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people were looking into a future that was so dramatically different from all what was in the market at the time. It was uh, able to print on uh, wow. untreated stock. I mean, the promises at least, right? Yes, maybe the promises, but was it so different? Um, we already had the digital printing. We already had, the, the, the only thing on, on the presses that he is installing now is that it is a larger format than the other digital printing. But and if you look good. at the quality, if the substrate independence, uh, mm. a lot has, has changed since, since uh, 2012. Um, and people who weren't bragging about something that they might do in the future at that moment, they do deliver presses now. Yeah, but but I, w I was most thinking of the time because, I mean, when I looked at la the Lander yeah. presses the first time, I was just like, you know, uh, the T-series from HP were, more, were still more for book printing and transactional print. Uh, the Canon printers were, were maybe more into also transactional print rather than, you know, high quality offset yeah. printing jobs. And, and so the, re the realistic alternative was maybe an Indigo machine or an Iridesc or something like that, but way smaller format and way slower. So I think that a lot of people signed the NDAs and not the NDAs, sorry, the letter of intent because they wanted to have that 13,000 sheets and our B1 machine, right? Uh, so, so I was just thinking that if you think of this for a second and, and, and getting back to the quote from Benny Lander, he said in an interview with, uh, uh, with uh, the editor from Print Week, um, uh, Danielle, uh, that uh, it was basically uh, 18 months after Drupal they would deliver, right? Yeah. So if that was the waiting yeah. time, it would probably have changed the world entirely. Or yes, but this kind of, of uh, technolog technological advancements doesn't happen overnight. And I was already amazed that he was showing uh, seven different prototypes, what he called the prototypes, um, at Drupa without anybody in the industry knowing about it. And that, that was something that triggered me, okay, can this be right? And of course those promises, they, they are amazing. And if, if true, it would have been something completely new and, and a breakthrough for the industry. But and, and that doing is, it, and that is my, uh, and that, sorry to interrupt you, but that is my point yeah. is that, you know, when people yeah. back in 2012 saw the machines, and know that Benny yep. Lander was the founder of uh, Indigo and have seen the results of digital uh, print, how it developed uh, through the years, also with HP. A lot of people wanted to believe this, and that was why the hype of the Lander machine has been yep. so extremely high. I mean, I just I just tried to put it in that perspective. And then I think there was uh, a few critical voices also from uh, Deutsche Drucker. I can't remember her name, but she wrote also, there was also an article whether uh, this uh, about uh, an anography and nanoparticles, well, it was could cause health problems for the operators, and and there were wow. there were like few people talking about the 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 the, uh, the quality issues and that. But at that time, I think that was okay. Not maybe not the health things, but if that was true, but but at least the the the, the quality thing because it was not a production machine; it was still in development. So wow. time went pump. By. And now we got to 2016, and now uh, the smaller machines, the S5 and the and the S7, was taken out of the program, as far as I remember, and it started with the S10, right? I forgot the numbers, uh, but uh, yeah. probably yes. But it, yeah, it started with the B1 one. because the, the S5 was the yeah. B3 format, yeah. and the S7 was the B2 yeah. format. But let's jump uh, because now it was it was a, a very big show again for Lander. It was. Uh, a lot of interest at the booth. Yeah. I remember myself when I was there, I was just blown away uh, because they are so good at mm. uh, presenting the technology. How, how was, yeah. what was your opinion Absolutely. when you went to the 16 Drupa? Well, it was uh, dark at their booth. Um, they didn't that's have true. a lot of light. And that's, that's, that's a tricky part. Um, 
Um, now I wasn't allowed near the machines because I'm not a VIP. Uh, you, you had to have a special permission to, uh, to get behind the ropes. Um, the machines, they did have some output, so that was already good. Um, but then there were also some prints on the wall, behind the rope, one meter uh, from, the, from the wall. It was dark there, uh, so you couldn't really judge the uh, print quality uh, as it should be possible uh, next to a printing press or in a, in, in a print factory. Uh, but even from one meter away, I could see that they had a... Well, I could see from one, one meter away that they had a res registration issue, so it probably was a serious registration issue. This was also reported by Deutsche Drucker, I think. At least somebody from Germany. Yeah, yeah, they did. So, uh, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Again, it was, no, this, this is not good. And what uh, most people don't know, the year after, in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, there was the, uh, um, the uh, packaging uh, event. And there you could see, could see some samples at the Edelman booth. Yeah. Um, this was announced, so I was on my way to, uh, to Vespa, I think, uh, and I made a small detour, um, so I went looking for it, and to my surprise, I could see it, but it was only this really small size, like this, more or less. Um, I took my loop, and I looked at it, and it was, okay, this is not good. I, if I recall correctly, they even still had satellites. So the ink was not jetting the way it should jet. Um, I was even too embarrassed to take a and not so I didn't take a picture of it. Um, also, the people behind the counter, they saw my face and their face was, yeah, we know. Mm. Okay. Um, and then you started to measure them and you looked into them and, uh, and, uh, and you started writing about it. So. Um, I mean, how was the result from that perspective? Yeah, I, I wrote about it already in uh, 2000. Uh, I know it was uh, it was 2020. Um, I made a I made a story. Uh, what what should, what will you see at Drupa? Um, not to announce any products because I don't know. Uh, but the different types of uh, product stages you can see. Um, you can see new visions. You can see prototypes, uh, beta machines. And I used Lana as, as, a, as a case uh, for that. And I had hoped to, in 2020 to, uh, to visit the booths and uh, uh, to see some real samples. But of course, 2020, uh, not a good year. Um, so I was a little bit uh, uh, disappointed uh, to not be able to, uh, to see any, any uh, examples. And then there was the, um, the installment at uh, Simeon in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands. And the um, uh, CEO of Simeon is, is very good at social media. And he was bragging about a new installment uh, on, uh, on, his, uh, on his blog and, uh, and a video on YouTube. And he said, okay, everybody who wants to get a print sample, just send me a file and I'll give, I'll give you a print sample. Now, um, the coincidence is that at that time I was working on a, on a photo book. I'm also an amateur photographer as you can see in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, during the first lockdown, I made a lot of pictures of Antwerp during the lockdown. And many of them were taken at the end of the blue hour. Uh, so when it's, it's just before it's uh, really dark and then you get a really nice deep blue in your pictures. So many of those pictures were really deep blue, um, but that was an issue to, uh, to get it printed. So regular CMYK, all that blue turns uh, turns purple. So eventually, I got it. Uh, I was looking for that before the Landa story. Um, um, I got some samples uh, for that book. Uh, um, so from uh, from HP Indigo, uh, somebody who has a six color machine but does but only uses four colors. Strange but true. Um, and then somebody um, uh, Jeroen from uh, Jubels uh, in the Netherlands. He sent me uh, different samples, both on iGen, on Xerox iGen, and uh, the Xerox series this, and that quality was outstanding. So eventually the book is also printed uh, with uh, Jubels on a Xerox series this. So I had some really nice samples of uh, challenging colors and uh, also text and stuff like that. So since Simeon offered to, uh, to make prints, I sent him the same file. Um, 
with the instructions look it's it's uh, it's challenging blue the attached profile is it's it's an rgd rgb uh pdf but the output intent is axiom yk which has a little bit larger gamut but yep. try the best so they send it to me uh, so they printed it uh, according to their own profiles uh, they sent me the samples i looked at it uh, with a loop and i saw several issues um, so this was uh, i'm really happy that i can see a real print from a real press not a sample that was prepared up front um, but a production uh, sample you could say uh, but i wasn't impressed uh, mm. certainly the registration issue was still the same um, yeah. And, and how was, uh, I mean, uh, did Simeon uh, react to your, your, I would say, criticism to it or because uh, Lander didn't uh, react uh, to it, right? Well, I don't know it by heart anymore. Um, I think they said something, yeah, it's, we're still working on the press. Um, they promised me a better one, uh, but never, never got it. Also interesting, by the way, is uh, I specifically asked to get an uncoated paper because that was uh, also the uh, the book was printed on uncoated paper, but I got a coated paper one. Um, so couldn't they print on uncoated paper at that moment? I don't know. Uh, it could be a coincidence or a mistake. Um, I certainly asked for an uncoated one. Maybe also a coated one would be would have been nice, but I got only the coated one. Okay. And then um, you uh, you kept digging into the story and. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons why I was uh, curious talking to you is because, um, I mean, I think that you know, I know, a lot, a lot of people know that that developing groundbreaking new technology takes a lot of time, uh, and it is. Uh, as we also both been talking about, I wrote it in an article from last week that uh, basically the um, actually this week <laughs> is basically that uh, that. Uh, um, time is changing, so the requirements and the competition changes. And I have a lot of respect for people that are taking chances on developing new technology, of course. What I don't understand is how little response they have been to, if they have been at all to your articles. Because now we spoke, uh, speaking about the quality, which is one of the key things in the Lanta story. Um, and then Simeon was part of that uh, re record of uh, the, how, ma how many print they could produce in a, in a month's time or something like that. And uh, it was, you wrote a relatively harsh article because you kind of took your own numbers and proved that the machine was not really fast, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, their official uh, statement is uh, 6,500 prints per hour. Um, so prints, it means one side or the other side, not sheets. Uh, so to have a duplex, you need two prints. Um, yeah, if it was a record on, on 20, um, 24 hours, uh, so multiply 6,500 uh, 6, by 20, 24, um, um, and then the number of uh, days you have in a month, and you get a much higher number. So there is, it's it's 4. not two or something like that, right? I'm sorry. 4.2 million or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not good at the numbers uh, from my head. I always use Excel. Um, yes, uh, now there are no machines that have a 100% uptime. I'm, I'm aware of that. But 100%, yeah. the difference in numbers was so high that, uh, yes, they, they had a party that they had uh, the new record. It was, by the way, the first one of the, at this moment, almost 20 installments that got to the 1 million a month. So claiming that one, you have an excellent quality and two, that it is the most productive uh, press. And um, it's not that, not that good, I think. And, and, and they, uh, never, they never responded. No. Okay. So, uh, the, so because that is what actually is the most, uh, the biggest mystery to me is that if you have a machine and everybody understand that it is still a machine in development, why don't they just talk to the to the people that okay we're challenging this and uh, we're expecting this and uh, I I'm I'm just saying this because that that is uh, I my attention to this got because you know some some people are using the machines and are happy in public with it and some are not using the machines at all and it's a quite expensive machine to use so I would I just wanted to talk to you because you probably are one of the 
the uh, independent persons that have been digging most into both speed and quality of this one. So what do you think is the, uh, you have any idea about what the problem is? No, mm. absolutely not. Okay. So do no, you think that, uh... do you, yeah, because I mean, when you look at the machine, it's like, it's a huge machine and they have invested so much money yeah. in it. So it's difficult to understand that, that maybe 10, 12 oh. years of development should not be enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's, it's much more than uh, uh, 12 years of development. Um, in 2014, I think it was, uh, when Yolanda stated that uh, he already had done 10 years of uh, development up front. Or was it uh, 2012 that he said we are working already 10 years on it? So it started 2003, 2004, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's all, almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Now, there is, there is probably one reason. Um, it's uh, one thing that's unique about the Landa Press. Uh, they jet the ink on a heated uh, uh, belt, mm -hmm. and that's another that's an extra variable. Of course, and mm -hmm. certainly if you look at the length of that belt, that might be the issue. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's what makes it unique. Yeah. So is this is this a, a design error? Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I think they should take a serious look at at the whole belt issue and try to arrange it in a different way. Uh, so the, trying to dry the ink on a heated belt, maybe that's a good idea, but not if it's such a long belt. Mm. Um, you, you, can, you can see minor changes in the, uh, in the direction or if it works a little bit, uh, changes a little bit, you will immediately see that in print. Yeah, and I would say that if you look at, at, at uh something that moves with the speed of up to 13,000, which they promised at 12, in 12. I mean, the, the, the belt is moving very fast and they need to have very precise uh, drop uh, of uh, anything basically, right? Um, and um, and uh, one of the things that I also find, um, I mean, of course, I understand that belt, the Benny Land and Land Company wants to, to keep the story alive and, 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 you know, keep people interested in the story. As we spoke about before, the, the competition and the market has changed so much that today, mm. yep. you, I mean, if they, if they only run about effectively two and a half to four thousand seats an hour, they are not really in a competitive hotspot right now. No. And that's, by the way, the mistake that many companies make, not only in printing, but also in other industries. At a certain point, you have an idea and you look at the competitors. Uh, but you know, at this time, um, your competitors are here and you plot a time when you are at the same quality. But you forget that also the competitors, the established technology also evolves. Mm -hmm. And for instance, the, uh, um, in the early days of digital printing, uh, uh, Cap Ventures, later Infotrends, now Keypoint Intelligence, they had this nice graph comparing the cost of digital print with the cost of offset. And I've seen them use that uh, that same graph. They just forgot uh, to lower or, the cost of the offset. <laughs> yeah, they never adjusted, adjusted the cost of offsets. But the first time I saw that graph was uh, late 90s, early 2000s. No, late 90s it must have been. Um, at that time, a job change on an offset press was easy. 20 minutes, mm. half an hour. If it was a difficult job, maybe uh, 45 minutes, yeah. but by 2012, a job change was a few minutes. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So it's completely different. Yeah, I mean, of course, and, you can always say that that the, the the business case around any digital is, of course, the opportunity to uh, to uh, one thing is fast changeovers, but it's also variable data, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe also to some extent the promise of digital is often that you can have a wider uh, color gamut if you really have the right inks and the right technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. So, uh, of course, uh, variable data printing is, is unique. You can only do that in, in digital printing. A wider gamut is certainly interesting for, uh, for, for, for packaging. Um, commercial printing, um, if I see that uh, how many printers, for instance, with the Xerox Series are printing the full gamut, it's very limited. I only yeah, found yeah. one. No, actually, two. Okay. Uh, so it, It's, it's, it's amazing, so um, that limits, limits also the, uh, 
the market, but still it's it's a very big market. Mm. Yeah. Um, Eddie, um, when I reached out to, to talk to you, it was because I think that the the work you do is extremely important because uh, not not yeah, okay. of course interesting in the in the story of Lanta, but it's interesting in general because I don't know how you feel about it, but you know. In the good old times, where where you had like a lot of trade media that spent time on testing equipment, uh, mm. that is not happening so much more anymore because it's too expensive and the money uh, for media is, is to, to some extent decreasing um, or changing at least. Um, I was just wondering, is that this also a learning lesson for not just for you and for the audience that watches this and reads your channels uh, um, that? that we need to have independent uh, reviews on technology before we just jump into anything new? Well, certainly before investing or even signing a letter of intent, people should test with real life jobs. Mm. Always do that. And uh, for instance, these days, just, just order something online with, with another company that has that equipment then you have a real life test. If you go to a manufacturer and maybe they will now be very mad at me, you get a chance that you have the most optimal press with the best uh, press operators. Uh, it's tweaked uh, to perfection. That's not real life. Real life is in an actual print shop. Mm. And please go there. And the, 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 the stories of, uh, of, of salespeople and technologists how the future will be. It's very good to define a strategy for the future, but it's not good for investments. If you want something, if you need something now, you have to have uh, machines, technology that works now, mm. not in six months, not in 12 months. And I, for instance, in the past, I, <laughs> I heard a story about somebody uh, who needed a new workflow system um, and it was a book publisher. Um, and they had two competing uh, uh, vendors. Uh, the one had the perfect solution for them, but they were more expensive. And the other one, they had the solution for 90% and the other 10% they were, they were developing it. So it will be ready by uh, in six months or something like that. But they were, um, I don't know the exact amount of percentage, uh, but they were a little bit cheaper. So they bought that one. Guess what? Development was stopped. So he had bought a workflow management system that he couldn't use. He had to buy the other one. So he had bought two. One was working and the other one was just uh, good for the recycle bin. <laughs> so it, the, um, always um, test, yeah. test, test yeah. with actual files, with actual jobs from your customers. Yeah. And Eddie, um, uh, on a, as an ending note on this, uh, this chat here, um, <clears throat> will you continue looking into the land of story or is it, does it have like an end for you or um it will probably end when they have a perfect machine that delivers perfect prints um so it's up to them so until until they basically deliver what they promise then you will be uh, looking into everything from speed to quality to uh, consistency and things like that well it, 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 all, it of course also depends on uh, the fact if I get samples, uh, real life samples, and if they are sharing their success stories, which are not really a success story, then I will be critical. Uh, but it, it, it will always be fact based. It's not that I'm, for whatever reason, um, hunting them or something. It's no, it's just I got some samples, I compared it with other samples, and it was not okay. Um, they made a story about that world record. Um, so I looked into the numbers and is this, is this a reason for celebration? Uh, not really, according to me. Well, and I, I'm doing that, and I already said, I, I've always been on the side of the printers. It's telling printers, please be careful. If you want this, check this and that. Um, don't just believe or buy the story, the good news story. Be critical, because otherwise it can cost you a lot of money. And uh, with this, um, Eddie Hagen, thank you very much for being here on Inkish. It was uh, a great insights from you. I think we had a wonderful uh, chat here. 
So um, I yep. will uh, I will definitely come and visit you when I get to Antwerp uh, the next time, and that will be sooner than later. I promise. Uh, we have some beers to catch yep. up with, and uh, I just want to thank yes. you very much for your time here online. It was great. You're welcome, and thanks for inviting me.